Hey folks, this is Rich again with uh, a walkthrough of how to secure up your SharePoint site, uh, your SharePoint list, if you are working with a Canvas Power App that is talking to this list and you want everybody to be able to use your app um, and not go to the list to be able to make edits to the list because sometimes a Power App will mash up a bunch of lists with um, logic and some show hide stuff going on, which you're not really gonna get, even with the modern forms of SharePoint, you're not really gonna get that mashup, uh, pulling in data from different places, unless you just got look up columns in the SharePoint list, but sometimes you're gonna to wanna to show a gallery of cool stuff um, and have some conditional things in there that are gonna pass people around your app until you're ready to them to submit it. Uh, whereas in a SharePoint list, Sometimes you're gonna, yeah, you might work with many lists in your app and you might submit data parent child to all of them. So if you just hit the list, you're um, potentially missing and bypassing the functionality you wanna have in your Power App. So to um, lock down your app, sorry, lock down your SharePoint site. First thing, you've got your site. So the theory here is I wanna lock down this, all these list items so that first of all, there's item level security on the list so the approver and the creator can see the list items and maybe the site owners which is fine which you'll get by default but I if I make a list item here right I don't necessarily want Sutter or Meredith or Ashley to be able to see it because it could be this is a situation of CapEx but you know there might be secret data here confidential data could be an um, HR thing not that I'd always recommend having HR information in SharePoint but you might have financial stuff in here because you're using the coolness of the Power Platform to be able to run some different financial uh, workflows and make things easier than shuffling paper. So we want to lock it down to them. Um, in a app, not really going to be able to do it, but you're going to want to use Power Automate. But first up, if I walk through the SharePoint site, what you want to do first of all to lock down your site or your, your list. Um, we'll go to list settings. So click the cog in the upper right, go to list settings. And then we're going to want to go on the advanced features of the list. Or the advanced settings, sorry. Um, not too worried about the content types at this point in time. Now, generally, people, when we start talking about item level permissions, if you haven't used Power Apps much or Power Automate to change permissions um, using HTTP requests or stop sharing grant access, you might want to think it's useful to toggle some of the data here to say just make things. Um, I can only see in the SharePoint list what I've made. Um, and I can only edit items that were created by me. That's all cool if you're just using SharePoint and you're not trying to make send approvals to that list for other people. Um, if you toggle this, that means you're locking it down, which is great, but it might miss a lot of the security that you actually want to have. You might want to give the ability for different people to come in a different stage to look at that list item and to make changes. But if you do it like that, then that's going to stop that from happening. You might have come out with other lists to, to handle some of that data that makes it easier. So generally, idle level permissions, you'd leave all this. Um, and then what we're going to do is go down, talk about search. Uh, you may not want your items to appear in search just to cover yourself. Um, if you've got security in place on the list in a good way, it will mean that nothing's going to show up in the SharePoint search that you're not allowed to see. Uh, but I have seen different organizations accidentally uh, put out a list where people have got more access than they should it happens a lot So sometimes if you look at a list you might not want that list the list items to appear in search The site will still appear in search, but you may not want to have the list show up So you could toggle that off um, if you want to and then The other key area I go down and I make a lot of changes with is this one So quick property editing. I don't want my people to be able to come in and use quick edit on my list uh, I want to lock that down so that should I need to do something in the list, I'm going to use the Power App. I'm going to drive people out the Power App, and then I'm going to, if I'm an admin and I need to make a quick edit, then I can come in, toggle that back off, toggle it back on to make my edit in and out, right? But generally, I'm going to turn that off. Um, so a quick edit and the details pane, right? So we can't make changes to things outside of the Power App. When I say that, doing that isn't going to stop me from using the SharePoint list, um, edit list, form or new list form so we'll show you how to fix that um, and you want to make sure you toggle on the new um, generally it's all coming up with the new but keep it new just in case save that all right so then as I said we now we're in a situation where we can't look at that it just changed wow took a second there come on Microsoft list you can keep up with me um, 
I can still add a new item here and it's going to give me a form which I don't want either right so what I do here um, I go to integrate I go to power apps and I customize a form so I set that up I'm just going to pause for a moment okay so the apps loaded um, there's a lot of fuels in this list but let's load it up with those two which is all cool um, what I tend to do is nuke it out did that delete? Did I get rid of it? Maybe it's a required field, so I need to unlock it. Let's do that. Great. Uh, what you can do here, you can unlock it. Um, you can hide it, delete it, remove it um, if you want. It's still got a form in there, right? So I just tend to leave that on there and move it around. Um, people can't do anything with it. It's still there. Um, but what I'd like to do now is put in like um, a rectangle or two just around the screen, um, like there, copy that, paste it again, and then I then put on a big button. Uh, you can make this any shape you like. Remember, it's going to be SharePoint, so it's going to come through weird to start off with size-wise. Um, make that look how you want to make it look. I've got other clips on how to make awesome looking button things. Um, and we're going to change that to uh, 22 just for fun. Open the CapEx app here. Again, you'll know your company's language, so you'll be able to put a nice, happy message, call to action for what they need to do. And so what you do here, you'd know the link or the URL to your app. Um, if you don't know, just open up an app like this. Um, and then click on the share icon, wait for the magic to load, and then see who's got it, that's cool, but we're gonna just basically copy that link there, that's copied right, back to the list, and then on select is the action, and we're gonna go launch, if I can spell launch, on to a winner, speech, double speech mark, link to the app, close the speech mark uh, and then just save publish that no one's going to see this when it pops up right it's going to be open a cafe set you can put pictures in there little information say hey we're not using this if you want to use the the um the items to do stuff um speak to whomever um but generally we want to try and hide this away so that's in there and then publish that and then publish the sharepoint the sharepoint list it will take a second or two to load up uh on your main SharePoint site that's published, leave SharePoint. We'll go back to SharePoint uh, and then guarantee first time we click it, it's not gonna work. Oh, is it? Is it gonna work? It is, look at that. I called it and it didn't, oh, no, 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 not yet. See, move the app, hasn't published it. So um, we what we're gonna happen, save, cancel. Um, that's a required field, right? So on the new form, it's not gonna work because there's nothing to submit. Um, so it's gonna throw an error if I try and save, cancel. Um, here of course if I do that, it's probably gonna say, hey, you gotta do that. You can't do it because we've hidden it away, right? So basically click that button, open the app um, is what we want people to do. So they'll go there, they'll open up the app for them. Um, not that this is the right app for this situation, but this is where we're going with this particular app. So basically cool, jump in there, force people so that they can't do much in here at all. They're basically gonna go and they can add a comment. Anybody using that yet? Um, Jump in, add a new item, gonna see it, can't do it. So basically get out, um, use the app, and then put up here in your navigation a link to the app as well, or up in your top nav, wherever you wanna put it, just make sure you've got information through there. Cool, so if we had an app, we've created the app, we submitted the form, we've made a list item. Currently with all these list settings, anyone can create a list item of this or anyone that's got access. So we've got permissions for this list, members and owners can create items. Uh, we're just man, we're just inheriting, uh, everyone can do it. So at the moment, the data source is still really open. So we've locked down the ability to make edits. Uh, made a few little tweaks and changes. We've got approvers. Um, I'm in the wrong list now, but that's okay. This, oh no, this is the right list still. Um, but I want to basically, when I create a new item, just ensure that the approver and the created by person can access the list and the owners. So to do that, we use Power Automate. Um, and we'll jump over to Power Automate to show you how to do that. So I hope this is useful so far. Uh, we're gonna skip into Power Automate. Um, it's gonna load that up and then we'll be jumping in.
let's do that. So we'll just go with uh, an automated cloud flow. Just security. There are several ways to do this. So I'm going to do a part two, which talks about HTTP. We're going to use a super basic method here. Um, on CapEx list. And then we're going to use this on item created. So there's a weakness there. If I've got an app where I'm not forcing the user to create or to list the approver or use a workflow to get that approver on the first time we make it, this won't necessarily give them access or give the right access. It might not be it. So you might have to edit the item and then do it as well. So just be aware that a good idea, if I've got people or required fields that I need to do things with, I force it when the item's created. So make that approval person column um, a required field. Cool, so we load up the new UI, UI interface for Power Automate. First thing everybody should do is remove the Copilot link so we've got a bit more space because um, I don't think Copilot's gonna help us. Prove me wrong, uh, but we can go for it. So items created, jump in. And then we're gonna do Power Platform. We're gonna find the list, CapEx. We've got a lot of CapEx in there, CapEx approvals. That's what we want. Um, not gonna worry about any filters yet. Um, Potentially, if I was letting people uh, save along um, and not have a required field, I could use some trade conditions, but we'll cover that in another session. So basically, when I was created, cool, let's assume that they have to put in the approver name, right? So what we're going to do, if they ever didn't, you could use 365 users lookup and get that person's um, manager or a person to be the approver, but we'll just assume that we've got two columns and They've got people's names in them and we're gonna do stuff with it. So the item's created, add an action. Okay, super easy at this one, uh, stop. That's what you put in. Stop sharing an item or file, boom. You need to select the same list as what you already had. Power platform, CapEx approvals. And then the ID is the unique ID based on the item before you, so ID. All right, so what this will do when this runs, it will remove the visitors and the members, but it will keep the owners. So always assume your owners are owners for a reason and they should have the ability to make action and take action and see what they're supposed to see because that's their job. If you've got people in your owners group who are not supposed to be in the owners group, take them out, put them in the messages group, members group, or put them into another group with contribute or edit access. All right, you've been warned. Okay, so then um, what we'll do is we were gonna grant access now quick segue uh, into the way this process works. So SharePoint likes to wipe its feet as an expression. So when you stop sharing, you know, there's a few things that happen in the back end of SharePoint. There's a few API calls that, that stop the access and do a bit of stuff. So, and Power Automate is kind of quick compared to that. So I would recommend putting in a delay. Uh, I don't know how long to make the delay. We're gonna make that 20 seconds. So just 20, not 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds. Just let that happen. Um, at the top level list item, generally it goes quick enough, so I could probably go 10 seconds or something. Um, if you're ever looping through child records um, and you stop sharing then share, there is more action that happens as Power Automate goes through the child record. So you must have a pause between stopping sharing and granting access. And if you've got to grant access to someone else, with a different permission, again, have another pause. I'll show you that. But if it's in an apply to each, make sure you do that for sure. Okay, so then go to add an action and then the word of the day is now grant. So grant access to an item or folder. Again, super easy and then we'll do this uh, edit. Uh, so we're gonna make, so I've submitted my item. Let's assume that once I've submitted, I'm not allowed to change it. So now the only person that can make edits to it are the owners and the approver. So let's do Power Platform again, CapEx approvals. The ID is still the ID we were using. And then new change, click advanced mode, click in there, get your dynamic content. So we want approver email in here, not clams. Yeah, we know it's one person. If we ever had more than one person, we put a little semicolon in there and then the next person in there, right? But we're gonna just go, this person is gonna have edit. Okay, and we're not gonna tell them about it. I, I don't think it always does, but we're just gonna say no, because maybe we're gonna run a pretty little workflow that's gonna say at the end, 
here's an email. Thanks, Rich, for submitting. Here's your manager or here's your approver and give them a link, deep link to your app to open the app straight away rather than go into SharePoint and find their way through it and fudge their way around by clicking the edit item and then they can't see it. Or I go to approvals and it's going to send off that way. So we've granted access. Now, again, we're happening. this is happening on the list item. So let's add another delay. Um, if anyone knows the magic number for a delay of how long it takes to change things, uh, please let me know. Cool. And then we're going to run the same access again. Let's do the old copy action. And then down here, paste an action. Let's get it in. Uh, get rid of that. Um, and we're going to go read. Okay. And then we're not going to notify Sam Cabbage approvals. We've still got that in there. Good. And now we're going to go created by email. Great. So got that. So that's the author email, and then that is the grant. And then down here, I can do more work with an email or a, um, approvals or whatever, but save that. And wait for that to save. Cool. So that's in place when things happen. So when I'm in my list um, and I create a new item, um, what will then happen is we're just going to give this person the access, and then the created by will have read access, and then all the other people won't have it. If you ever want to test this on an item, you basically could change the workflow um, to say manual start, uh, like button, and then select an item, run it on that, test it. Um, but that's pretty much what you're going to need to do. The next workflow, we'll actually have a work, we'll have an app where you can click on, which is going to show the information. And then we'll have um, how to stop sharing and grant access to list items using HTTP calls. Uh, where we can validate the person does have access and then how we're going to use um, SharePoint groups to populate different access or we might even look at how we can do Office 365 groups um, to show and give access based on associated people to that list item. So I hope this was helpful. Quick little whistle stop tour of how to, to update your SharePoint lists to make sure they're going to be a bit more secure behind the scenes. I do know some people like to use views to hide data, but that's security by obscurity. So I could still find that list item if I went looking. Um, so I want to do this to ensure that only the right people have access to those items. And this would be how I would suggest doing it. Grant access, stop sharing, really easy. Um, if you want more complicated or want to use groups, do different things, then HTTP request is the way to go. Cool. Hope that helped. Bye.